I really want to tell them about those cookies. Okay, okay, okay. So just from looks alone, that cookie is pretty big. And while I don't currently have the exact measurements, it's still fun to do math. So in the spirit of cookies and circles, I'm going to show you how to find the center and radius of a cookie or circle by completing the square. So, before we dive into the math, it's important to know some basics about the circle and its equation. A circle is a conic section defined as an intersection of a plane perpendicular to the cone's axis. In simpler terms, it's just cutting the cone in a way that leaves a circle. Circles are round figures that have points an equal distance away from its center. The equation goes as follows. x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. H and K are very similar to X and Y in the way that they act like a normal ordered pair. H being in the X coordinates position and K being in the Y coordinates position. This is important to know when finding the center of the circle, which is in the form X comma K. Finally, R squared. R is simply the radius of a circle, or half the length of its diameter. But in the equation, it's squared. So when we're looking for the actual radius when using a circle's equation, we take the square root of the constant on the right side. Alright, so say we have the equation right here, and we're tasked with completing the square and then identifying the center and radius. While it may not look normal now, we can fix it by completing the square. Completing the square is just a fancy way of saying that we're going to convert this equation into a simpler equation in the form of h and k so that we can find the radius and center of the circle easily. The first step to completing the square is moving all like variables together, and then moving over any constants so we only have x's and y's on one side of the equation. Next up, we're going to want to find any first degree variables with coefficients, and then divide them in half, or by 2. Doing this will give us the correct numbers to put in the form of h and k. We know this is correct because if we factored out this factor, we would get x squared minus 8x plus 16. Which leads us to the next step. Once we get the variables in the form of h and k, we can take the constant inside the parentheses and square them. After this, move them over to the constant side. Be careful not to flip their signs, just move them over. Hopefully you see too that these numbers are the same as the constants when you factor out the two factors. After moving all the constants to one side, just simplify. And there we go, a fully fledged circle equation that we can use in numerous ways. But we're not done yet. We still need to find the center and radius. If you remember from earlier, based on the base circle equation, the sole constant on the right side is our radius squared. So to find the actual radius, we just need to take the square root of 9, which is 3. Now that we have our radius, we can find the center too. For this, we need to remember that the center is in the form h comma k. So we can plug in the values from our new equation into the circle equation. Or you can just flip the signs. After this, you find that our h is 4 and our k is 3. So putting this in the correct form, we have 4 comma 3, or the center of the circle. To conclude, we took this original equation, completed the square to put into a circle equation in the form of h and k, and from that found the radius by square rooting the constant, and we found the center by properly putting h and k into an ordered pair. For our next example with circles, we only have the endpoints of the diameter, but we're still tasked with finding the equation, radius, and center. While this may seem like not enough information, it's actually the perfect amount when using two formulas. These are the midpoint and distance formulas. The midpoint formula is used to find, well, the midpoint, or the center in other terms, which means its equation is written in the form of an ordered pair. It goes as follows. x sub 1 plus x sub 2 over 2, comma, y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2, with sub 1 and sub 2 telling you which x and y to choose in the ordered pairs. The second formula is the distance formula. This formula is used to find the diameter of the circle. It goes as follows. 
the square root of x sub 2 minus x sub 1 squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 squared. Now that we have these formulas, we can just plug in our points. Getting 18 plus 4 divided by 2, comma, negative 13 plus negative 3 over 2. When simplified, we get our center 11, comma, negative 8. We still need the diameter though, so we're going to plug in the values again in the distance formula. When we do this, we get the square root of 4 minus 18 squared plus negative 3 plus 13 squared. This simplifies to 17.2. Now some might get this confused for the radius, which is half the diameter. So always divide the result of the distance formula by 2 when given the endpoints of the diameter to find the radius. When we do this, we get 8.6 as our radius. Phew! So we have the center and radius. That means we can plug them into the base circle equation and get our actual equation in the form of h and k. If you remember from earlier, this is the equation for a circle, and we know that the center is in the form of h comma k, so we can just plug these numbers in, not forgetting to distribute the negative. Which leaves us with the radius. We currently have the radius as 8.6, but to put into the equation we need to square it. So once that's done, we get r squared to be 74. And there we go, a center radius and a circle equation, all from two ordered pairs and two formulas.